Yo, sports type and hip hop, Ricky Sway. Zeke. Yo, we are here at When Bosses Link Sense Social Center. Uh, we got a guest today. Uh, we got my man, a friend, actor, director, all of the above. Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur professor, professor, writer, Derek. Shoe Dow. collector. Yeah, shoe collector, Derek Dow. Uh, Southside stand up. Uh, we're going to talk to him for a few minutes. Probably more than a few minutes. <laughs> and, uh, you know what I'm saying, we're going to get some insight on uh, acting, directing, etc. He's going to tell you how to become an actor. Get ready. And he's a professor, by the way, at Chicago State. Cougars, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Sports Life and Hip Hop, Ricky Sway. Yo, Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we, got, we got my man, my boy, Derek Dow. What's up? Derek D. Dow. Derek D. Dow. Don't forget the D, uh, pause. D, leave the D out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got D, act, yeah. actor, director, uh, sneaker enthusiast. Uh, Teacher, food. professor. <laughs> <laughs> professor, yes, don't leave the professor out. Absolutely. Professor. Um, Script writer. Script writer, yeah, yeah. writer. Um, mm -hmm. Been in shows like The Shy. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Roadies on Showtime. You had none of your research. I did. This <laughs> <laughs> my second time go around. My brain, the 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 meet me mm -hmm. like um, Shot Town's finest, Shot Town's own, Southside. Yeah. And um, I'm about to take the mic at that. Point. What you want me to say? Yes, <laughs> Shot Town. Go ahead. Roll with it. Roll with it. Roll with it. Thespian. <laughs> <laughs> Roll with it. What's up? What y'all want to ask me? Y'all got me out the bed. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got me out the bed. What, 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 ma what made you want to be an actor slash director slash entrepreneur slash et cetera? Well, <laughs> when I was a young boy, oh. <laughs> no, no, um, no, I think, you know, again, I, I, it took me some time to learn that. I, I, I like to entertain the family. I was definitely one of those. People that do on the family units, and it's like, yo, call, where Derek at? Call him up in here. I still remember. Do that him. rap. Yeah. Do that Listen, dance. Wait, no, no, no. My first talent was a baby stripper. They used to call me Baby Sex Whoa. Appeal. Whoa. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> baby Sex Appeal. I remember this. I'm. This is a story. I remember this story. And and if you don't, oh, this is a real it, story. I, I'll, oh. I'll go on the internet <laughs> and show you this picture. <laughs> I remember, I don't know what it was, it was my granddad or somebody had, somebody bought him like a G-string that was like a leopard print, and I think it was too small for him, you know what I mean? It was, like it, was, it, was, it was baby size. So my aunties or somebody thought it was funny to be like, yo, you want these things? So I put it in, and I remember coming out, I had my little towel on, and I came out and I did the, uh, the magic mic, baby sex appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I got pictures. I got pictures. <laughs> I got pictures. Um, but yeah, no, no. I just knew I always wanted to entertain. I, I just knew I wanted to do that, but I never knew I was gonna end up here because you know I'm from a working class family, mm -hmm. blue collar, you know, um, post office stuff like that. You know. So yeah. neither of your parents have the gene. No, no. I mean, well, my mom was a Playboy Bunny. Okay. Uh, yeah, Hugh Hefner. I mean, a lot of people don't realize Hugh Hefner is from Illinois. And I did not first, know that. Yeah, his first mansion was here, stuff like that. So, uh, but it, again, it's the difference between a Playboy, a, a Playboy bunny and a playmate. You know what I'm saying? Do you know where the mansion is located? I don't remember. It's somewhere on the north side. Of it. It's still the Playboy still mansion. Around. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's still around. All right. I mean, it's not the Playboy mansion anymore because you know he moved. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, but I still have paraphernalia from that house. Mm -hmm. Like I got cups and mugs and stuff like that. It's a picture of my mom. I don't have it, but it's a picture of my mom. I remember growing up seeing her sitting on Billy D. Williams' lap. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So the and next I like, man, the I used to pray. I'm like, that's my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the part two that. should be at your house. Yeah. Part two of the interview should be at your I house. The, I saw him one time. I was at NBC for an audition. And he had uh, walked past me. And he was like, Yo, Dad. And he was like, Hello. I was like, Daddy! 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 <laughs> I remember him walking up. I was like, Lando Christian is my father. <laughs> Did you speak? I said, no, I said, hi, because he spoke to me. He, oh, he, he spoke, spoke to you. Like, okay. He was, like, he was like, hello. And I was like, <laughs> wait, how'd that voice go? He's like, hello. And I was like, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that was, a, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good story. So yeah, so that was it. And my dad, you know, uh, well, was a marine, stuff like that. Worked on a um, engineer for the CTA and stuff like that. Just mm. worked on engineer left the engineer. Mm-hmm. Mom, mom is a Playboy bunny. You said. Yeah, so she was not in magazines. Not in magazines. Wore the okay. uh, cocktail dress with the bunny all right. dress, and we had like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's a little different. But lived okay. In the mansion, you know, uh, very. You know, it's different. But here's the thing: like, so comfortable with the. Uh, she's always so comfortable with her nudity, and I used to have to be like, "Mom, <laughs> mom, come up. I can't. Do, I'm mom, I'm, I'm 18. You need to put some on. I'm, I can't keep seeing it." But it did help me. Like I was never like scared of girls, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I, I definitely, like, they, you know, pushed me out there to be like, yo, it was a very matriarchal uh, family I grew up in, so, uh-huh. you know, you know how that goes. So you get, you 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 pull yourself up by the bootstraps the in the city of Chicago. Mm-hmm. You started from the bottom, not here. Now I'm here on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Yo. Now I'm here, now I'm here. Oh, no. All that years of work. Oh, that <laughs> no, I'm just messing with her. I'm happy to be here. My abdomen. Mm-hmm. Um, you go out to L.A. Go out to L.A. Um, what made you, what, what was the, uh, what was the thing that made you the want? The catalyst? Yeah. The ones that get you to get out to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, basically, by that time, right, I had already made, like, a short film. I mean, a uh, feature film, some short films, rented out stuff. I had worked uh, with, with Ford Motors, helping them mm-hmm. um, bring out the uh, Fiesta campaign when they were trying to bring the Fiesta for it. So I did all of that. But I, I didn't feel like I was really grasping how to make things. Mm-hmm. And and my, I remember walking past my mother one day, and she's like, why don't you get your mama a master's? I was like, I already got you a bachelor's. Just stop doing fucking Greek. Uh, but I decided because I went to school the first time for her that I was like, I'm going to go to school for myself. Okay. And then I was like, what's the top film school? Mm-hmm. And I was like, it was NYU and no offense to no New Yorkers. I just knew. <laughs> you didn't want to be cold. New York. I was. I don't mind cold. It's just New York energy and my energy. I'm a country city boy. You know, like my grandma, you know, migrated here from the South. Mm-hmm. We still own property. I still go down to the property in rural Arkansas that we live. Like that, that energy just didn't match with my energy, and then that's like I said, USC was considered the best. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I want to go there, oh. and that's why I went. John Singleton, you know what I'm saying? Uh, George Lucas, well, Robert Zemeckis. You know, yeah. What was your welcome to LA moment? Um, when I got there and realized for the first time, I'm like, oh damn, I am a minority. <clears throat> uh, everything has a gift and a curse. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Chicago is kind of a bubble because we are hyper segregated. Mm-hmm. Like again, I would like every school I went to was all black people. I was also a Nation of Islam member, so it was like everything was like shielded. Like I went to Kenwood, right? Mm-hmm. I went to Hills Franciscan. I went to like all these places, and it was just like everything was like us, 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 us. Mm-hmm. So when people be like, oh, you know, y'all minority, I was like, who minority? All I see is black people, mm-hmm. you know. And when I got there, I was like, oh. It's only six of us. <laughs> it's only six of us in my in my year. I'm like, it's only six of us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then that like really that was really my coming to. And I was like, okay, cool. What does one need to do to get into USC film school? Do you have to submit a film? You have to write an essay? It's a little bit of any. I don't know how it changed. If it's changed, yeah, what did you have to do? Well, I submitted a film. I submitted. I had a recommendation from one of the executives at Ford Motor Company. Oh, well, um, that would help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just knew somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's about who you know. Um, so it's little stuff, stuff like that. And then, of course, I just set my track record. By that time, like I had like write ups. Like years ago, when you know Barack and them was, you know, in the White House, the Chicago Mag had wrote something called. Um, there's like 28 influential people in film and the mm. two newcomers. I was one of the newcomers. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, like, so I sent all that stuff in and then I wound up getting in that little. So you can't just be a person with a dream, like, yo, I want to make film with no kind of background and get into USC? I think, no, I, I want to say, I think it's possible, but they say getting USC film school is harder than getting to Harvard now. Oh, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, again, it, it could be changed a little bit now since I mean I've been gone for a minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> In my ripe old age. 
<laughs> um, I can date the grandma and the, <laughs> <laughs> the grandma and the auntie <laughs> and the oldest niece. <laughs> it was <my laughs> I'm the Swiss Army knife for boys, friend. It's something Cap. for everybody. <laughs> Yo, ass. Um, you get to LA, you move, yep. you're out there. Um, some of the differences between LA and Chicago, as far as uh, moving and shaking, moving around. Oh, it's a whole bunch of different. I, I can tell you pros and cons of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one is some cool. That, some that I loved about Chicago that mm-hmm. I didn't really like about LA in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I like that if I was in a room with people who didn't like me, I knew they didn't like me. <laughs> here and, and here. Okay. <laughs> there. I'd be like, I don't know if you about to poison my drink. You are super <laughs> happy, but you might not like me because mm-hmm. you, you see a lot of that. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't want to, um, and just my experience, it might not be every, I don't want to offend you because I don't know what you what you hold the keys to. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where, at least in the Chicago I grew up in, I don't know how it changed, um, they didn't care. It's like, right. I, yeah, what you got to offer me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't care. That was a big thing. But then I got, um, also, I loved being there because my mind opened, mm-hmm. right? You you get in the safe bubble here where everybody thinks the same. Not everybody, but you know, if you go through some of the same stuff, you, mm-hmm. you've been through, so a majority of people are on the same, same thing. I love being challenged there. Mm-hmm. I love having different ideas there, you know, and that helped me grow as a person. That's why I believe in travel. That's why I always try to, like, leave the country once a year, once a year. Mm. And not even just go to places where everybody want to go. I ain't trying to go to Queen Flynn's and stuff like that. I want right. to go places where Chilla it's like, you know, right. I'm trying to go. <laughs> I want to go places where people, I got to sit and talk to you. Right. And I got to get to know you. Have you been to Africa? Not yet. I don't do me like that. <laughs> food, food wise, different, right? Where? In Chicago, LA, I'm saying. Oh, we food. got the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got the better. Like, pizza got to be trash out in LA. I became an athlete in, um, oh, that's in, okay. in, um, What's that place? Los Angeles. <laughs> you you oh yeah you hike yeah hike and, and like you, and and I'm not like a ACG hiker. boots yeah I'm not a hiker like <laughs> you know other people are like oh we going on a brisk walk I I'll, I'll do ten miles on the incline like mm. one time I Anthony and make yeah out, they yeah out from me. I took him to an uninhabited that. island and we spent the whole day hiking on the uninhabited island mm. and um, just doing stuff like that hiking in, I done took people cave cave hiking and mm-hmm. uh, even during the pandemic. You what saw I, bats out there? In the cave? Uh, no, no, no. Bats? Yeah. Batman? No. <laughs> no, I just not see, no, I just see my bats. <laughs> I saw other type of animals. Uh, bears. I've seen uh, rattlesnakes and stuff on the trail. A mm. mountain lion here, too. Um, but I remember during the pandemic, one of my give backs was when we came back, and you know, it's still closed, but you need to do outdoor stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't even know about Star Rock. It's only like two hours yeah. away. No, they don't. You know what I'm saying? It's like only like two hours away. Never so you I never like, heard of Star Rock? Yeah. yeah, so I got I got a group of uh, us together. Yeah, I got I got a I got a group of us together, and I took us on a hike. I was like, yo, because the people was watching. It became like a phenomenon. It became like hiking with Dow, especially during the pandemic, mm. because people like they was like trapped in the house. I was like, everybody get your mask on. I can keep a safe distance, right. and I was just taking people on hikes and like going crazy. Hmm. And I hiked in so many places. Oh man, I hiked all over Hawaii. I done hiked in Greece. Oh wow! I like, like I honestly don't want to go on vacation. If at least now I'm good. I, we can do parties, <laughs> but you gotta give me one day where we getting lost in the wilderness. Oh no! Nah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, bro. Listen, I'm I'm that guy. I will jump out the plane. I jump out of airplane. I will bungee jump. I am that guy. Come on, y'all do booty rock. <laughs> jump out of plane. Oh, those those are two different things. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. What 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 made you want to join the nation? Um, was that a, a family well, like part a of your family thing. tree? So it's like every it's like it's like everything, right? It's your your parents are Christian, you you were Christian, stuff like that. It was the, the man my mom was dating at the time. Oh, the okay. And um, so yeah, so I was the head star. Uh, then I I was still in Beasley. I went to Beasley the first first like one to third, but I would also go to the like the. Um, Mom University of Islam, like during the summers, mm-hmm. and then I went there officially from the fourth and fifth grade and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, are you still practicing that to this day? I mean, does, I, I, I I pray with my hands open, but <laughs> 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 you know, 
Like like the emoji. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but you know what? I, I think you know why I'm thankful for that faith though, if I'm if I'm being honest. Especially at that time to me, because now in hindsight looking in, it felt more civil, mm-hmm. more like a civil thing than a religious thing. But I'm thankful because like back then, all I saw was like who was the people with money back then? The drug dealers and the Muslims. Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, who's the people with the money? Think about that. Who's the people with the money back then? The drug dealers and the Muslims, right? And um. And it gave me uh, a lot of self-respect. I respected myself as a as a black person in America. You know, what mm-hmm. I, mean? I didn't I didn't see myself as all the criminal and stuff like that. I saw myself, you know, what I'm saying as something respectable, some some somebody to give something or offer something. So that's why I'm thankful for that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because listen, on Sunday nights in uh. And Stoney, all you saw was Muslims with the bean pads and the soldiers at war. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's, all, that's all you saw. I can appreciate any hood friend I got and any any journey they have, and I can appreciate other people that's, you know, foreigners, and I can appreciate people from affluent. And I, that's why I always feel good in any room. I didn't feel always good in any room before then. So that was the biggest difference. What made you choose USC? Oh. That's, all right. So I take the mic of whoever asked me a question. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good, good idea. So basically, honestly, and I'll make it quick, USC, I went to college for my mother the first time. Mm-hmm. And I said, if I'm going to go back, because I never wanted to go to school. So I said, if, but if I'm going to go back, I'm going to go for myself. And then I looked and I said, well, who's the best film school? Mm-hmm. And it was always three. They would say, uh, NYU, USC, and AF- AFI. USC had the AF- ranking as the... AFI. AFI, American Film Institute. And is that New York? No, that's in LA as well. Oh, okay, okay, okay. My apologies. Yeah, so USC ranked number one. So I was like, if I'm going to go back to school and get debt, more debt, I'm going to the best I'm going to the best one. Yeah, USC is yeah. definitely the best. Yeah, and so that's that's what happened. And then they accept, and the funny thing is, let's be your own people. When I was telling some people, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna go to USC." They're like, "You ain't gonna get in there. You for a kid right. from the much college." And I was like, "Really?" And I got in. When you you get to USC, mm-hmm. and you you get uh, accepted, and you obviously like you have uh, all the doubters. You've definitely overcame all of that mm-hmm. when did you what was your moment where you like yo i belong like dude i'm better than all these cats or i'm just as good if not you know what i'm saying same level or just as mm. good um well i already got this one let's oh. keep with this one okay <laughs> <laughs> um you know what i don't do you know where you were at do you know what project you was working on do you know like you know you was like was? yo like so i'm i'm gonna say this i had the the total opposite. When I got there, it was a humbling experience. I was like, I'm not as good as most of these people. Damn. I was like, most of these people out here killing me. Uh-huh. But I loved it. Right? Because uh-huh. I, that was a big reason for me to leave. Because I had, like, became, like, this big fish in this medium pond. But it was, like, in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So it's like everybody giving me praise or something. And, I, you know, and I'm, like, still living off the laurels of that short film. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I mean, on a feature film, and I'm like, yo, I'm still pushing this thing two, three years later. Mm-hmm. I gotta go. Like, I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gotta right. go. Um, and I remember being, I was also in this like really, really hood movie called Vulture City. Oh, yeah. In the when it first, <laughs> and shout out to my boy Marcus Carter. Like, I still mess with him, I rock with him. But I was like the very first. <laughs> Dude, in that instant. And I was like, I gotta go. Cause now it's just like get on people. Hey, 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 what's up, Z? Yo, I'm gonna get the folks. <laughs> <laughs> just quoting lines at me. Mm-hmm. I was like, and 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 I just felt stagnant. I felt like I wasn't growing. I was like, I don't I don't think I'm as good. And this is after like Ford Motors had picked me up to do some stuff with them. Mm. You know, like other stuff. And I just like, I gotta get better. Talk your shit. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I, was like, I, was like I was like, I gotta get better. And I got there and I was like, yo, I'm not as good as anything. But the thing that ensured me as a person, though, mm-hmm. was like, even when I'm not, wasn't as good, I was like, people was rocking with me. 
-hmm. People was like, yo, what Dion? Whatever, you know what I'm saying? I threw, I remember my first birthday there, I threw, I had rented a party bus for everybody on. They was like, yo, people was talking about that party for like a year. They was like, yo, that party bus? <laughs> da -da 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 -da. What made you think you weren't as good? Was it other people had more feature films than you? Or what was, no, it, what was the, let you know you were it was below the, them? So It they, was the quality of work. Oh, okay. It was the quality of work. I'm not. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna bullshit you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'm the best of this. You know what I'm saying? Because even right now, I clearly, because I'm not the best, right? I wanna. I, that's still something I um I aspire to be, right? You know, because it here's the thing: you got LeBron James, right? Who's arguably you could put him in the, in the goat debate, right? Okay. And you got other people like, no, he's not the best, right? You can look at the bodies of work, mm -hmm. right? So my thing is. I'm not trying to be the best. I'm trying to be the best me. And mm. and in me trying to be the best me, that's going to... Um, no, but <laughs> it's like, for You real. like that, huh? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's going to... Jamaica's free. good. Jamaica's very... <laughs> no. Because I've been in the space of trying to be the best, and then that became competitive, and then the, uh, then the work suffered. Mm. Whereas trying to be the best you, and like I tell my students, is the voice. Sooner or later... Like, even with y'all with this podcast, right? Sooner or later, you'll have the best cameramans and the best mics and the best thing. The only thing that's going to matter is y'all voice and what y'all bring into the space, mm -hmm. right? Sooner or later, I can get the best cameraman with the best lights and the best studios, and I'll make a film, and people are like, it just didn't resonate because I didn't develop my voice. Mm -hmm. So that's what, like, for me, I just want to be the best me because th that then I'll find my audience. It's, I mean, like Tyler Perry. You know, I don't care what you say about like his technical aspect of his work or anything like that. He got an he, audience. He, he got an audience because his voice is so distinct. Yes. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino. You you don't even got to know it's a Quentin Tarantino movie, and you be like, oh, this this like some Quentin Tarantino stuff. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Spike Lee, all these people, notice they carved out their voice. People keep thinking it's all about the regular type. No, they, their voice is undeniable. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's funny you mentioned all of them, Quinn Tarantino, uh, Tyler Perry. Who's yeah. someone that you really you really admire their work and you kind of gravitate to their work and like, yo, I could I could I really rock with them. Yo, it's um it's this one director I th I feel like he don't get enough love, Antoine Fuqua. Mm. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Yes. He did all. He did the Equalizer. You know you a bad boy when you get Denzel to, do, to not only do a sequel, you had him do a trilogy. Yeah. yeah. You tell me a a, a sequel <laughs> you ever seen Denzel do, right? Um, and I think and I think he slept on right. You know, because he he has a lot of good films out there. Um, I even love that Magnificent. It was a Magnificent Seven movie he did, the cowboy movie with Denzel and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You like that movie? I like that movie. You didn't like it? You I didn't, didn't like see it. You didn't like that movie? Why are you? Was like Fuqua it? Training Day too? Training Day. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you see what I'm saying? So it's like, he oh. yeah. Yeah. So I think he stopped. I feel like you never really hear about him for real. I think like, he did. Brooklyn's Finest. He did. Yeah, yeah. Brooklyn's Finest was good too. But yeah. you, but you never hear about like the yeah. most you heard about him was when he had the scandal with Nicole Murphy. <laughs> and I was like, and I remember that, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not condoning what the brother did, but I was like, man, this man been out here making some hits, <laughs> making some hits, and nobody yeah. talking about him. But for me, that that also like took some pressure off me too. I said, listen. Ain't nobody got to talk about you, and you can still successfully live your dream. Right. Because you can't take away that he successfully made this stuff. Mm -hmm. He successfully still got a check. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I thought, like, he's on top of my uh, list. This is going to be controversial. I don't condone what this man did. Uh, but Easy. Woody Allen. Oh. Woody Allen was a uh, was a fan. Like, look at this. Uh, and I mess with him too because like Woody didn't Woody doesn't like move the camera for unnecessary reasons. Right, like, like you know, how some people gotta hide their stuff, which is a whole bunch of cuts. He would just right. like he would he would let it go. Hannah and her sisters, all the like, I really liked his work. Oh, and just the ability to have two actors and not a lot going on, and they just having a conversation, and it's interesting. Uh -huh. I used to look I, like I love that. Again, don't condone anything <laughs> else. We just strictly talking about the artistry. Cur curb your curb your enthusiasm. So that too. L that Larry David. Larry David. Yeah. Um, mm. I just like you know what I'm saying. I just I really rocked with stuff like that. And then of course you know I appreciate you know some of the you know newer directors. That was Steven Spielberg of course, and you know Forrest Gump one of my uh, oh wait Robert Zemeckis and yeah. stuff like mm. Forrest Gump one of my favorite movies. You know it's a lot of good people out there. But those were the two for the most part that I'm like yo 
a lot of their work resonated with me, mm. you know. I ain't got a mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what, what would you say you like more, being in front of the camera or behind? Everybody asks me this question. Uh, I like them both equally. I'll tell you why. They give me a break from each other. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a cop out. Answer the question. No, I didn't even finish. No, 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 because he said 50-50. It's behind the camera in front. I didn't didn't finish, did he? No. You were about to explain it. Yeah, I was. (laughs) Actually, I don't even think I want to talk to you no more. (laughs) Just me and yo. (laughs) Um, The reason I say 50-50, especially because, think about it, I'm I'm more of an indie filmmaker, more of like, you know, I do a lot of smaller budget digital stuff. So when I'm in a project, whether I'm a writer of it or somebody bringing me in, you're talking about that's a baby I'm taking from conception to completion. So I'm reading scripts, I'm giving notes, I'm doing this, right? I'm casting, I'm helping produce, I'm getting stuff together, I'm on set, I'm directing, I'm all of that stuff. Then after all of that's done, I'm in the edit lab, then I'm with the colorist, I'm with the composer, I'm with the, and then after that, now we gotta send it to film festivals. I'm going to as many film festivals as I can, right? That's all the stuff I gotta do, right? I love it, but it's tiring. When I'm, a, when I'm acting, you give me my script, I do my lines, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do my lines, you record me, and I'll see you guys at the premiere. <laughs> you okay. know? Yeah, that makes you sense. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it gives me a break from things, but also keeps me acting, because I love to be on set. I'm not one of those people that when we have a 12 hour day, I'm like, oh man. I'll be right, like, that's what we right. hear about a lot, the long I, days on set. I don't even notice it. I'll be like, it's not enough time. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, it's not enough time. and and. Set for me is different from a lot of the people I know because I actually lose weight on set when a lot of other people gain weight because you got craft services and especially when you you know people are eating and all that drink and be merry. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the script that you read where it's kind of challenging? To what act? Like you was like man, like like you saw the script and you were like yo like this is. Man, this is this is hard, but yo, like uh, I gotta get in the mold for it. There's, you know what? It, there, it was one, and it's it's unfortunately because it, it never got recorded, and never got seen. Mm-hmm. So I was on a show called Roadies on um eight, on Showtime, mm-hmm. and I had to audition. It was like fifteen pages of like just almost like a monologue, and I'm just going in. And I remember uh, meeting with uh, Cameron Crow, and um. And, and his producers there, and we read, and then we going in there, cause I'm 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 playing this. One, it was scary because it's like we want a big black bald man who played drums. And at the time, I was like short, long locks, skinny. <laughs> I was like, you know, and I was like, yo, how how am I supposed to play this, right? Because you trick yourself out mentally. I'm like, well, you want this big black? Am I supposed to be in there? Like, yeah, and um, but I was like, no, I'm gonna play it like myself, and I'm gonna play it. With my humor, I'm gonna be like kind of funny with it. Mm-hmm. And I remember us going back and forth, and it was intimidating because I hadn't been in a room with somebody um, who was at that level, right? You know, he he directed Almost Famous and stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, I'm I'm in here, and like this is like my first like mm-hmm. not a not a bit thing. This is like, yo, you have a chance to become like a series regular mm-hmm. or, or a guest star. And we did it, and I killed it, and. By the time we started shooting, so much stuff had changed in the show. And because I was in the band, I wasn't a roadie because the show was about the roadies. They only got to t- three of the band members. They didn't get to the last two, because me and this other guy, right? And um, and I remember he came, and I still have it somewhere in my house. He gave me 16 pages of backstory. He said, look, next season, this is, this is you coming. And it was like, and I knew it was because like I'm sleeping with the lead singer sister, and I was like, I said, oh, I'm about to be lit in season two, and the show wound up getting canceled. Wow, that could have changed the whole trajectory <laughs> of my career. No, it's not over. Every, it's not never over. You know, yeah. everything in due time and God's time. But I was just like, yo, man. bars. I think about how many times I, I think about how many times I got there, and he's just like, this ain't it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, what's the next thing? You know. Um, I forgot the question that quick. Um, oh, you said you were on the shy, right? Mm-hmm. So I, what's what's a day like a typical day like on set at the shy? Do you, I'm not familiar. What 
uh, did you have a big role? Or? No, I had a uh, I had a nice little speaking role. I, look, I'm never gonna bring up if I was an extra. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm. I'm not gonna. You know, no offense to nobody. <laughs> but if I, nobody, no offense to nobody. Like, so like, how, so did you have to try out? Do, yeah, so I had to, to come in. So I was still living in LA at the time. Okay. So it's so funny how. Shout out uh, to Michelle Hayes, uh, Hayes Talent. Mm-hmm. I was in LA. I happened to come home to visit. Mm-hmm. And I, I, at that time, Michelle was trying to start a uh, like a streaming service, okay. and people was like, "Oh, you should talk to such and such. He got all these short films." So I was like, "Yeah, cool, cool." I came to meet her, and then we were sitting talking. And I don't know how it came up. I don't know if she said I had an interesting look or whatever, whatever. And I was just like, and she was like, "You act?" I said, "Yeah, I act." She's like, "You act?" I said, "Yeah, I act." <laughs> She's like, "All right." She's like, "Audition for me, you did." I did an audition for. I think I did okay. I don't think I did like amazing because she gave it to me on the spot, um, but. Shout Wait, out. so she, what, what is the audition for? What does that mean? Just, to, to, to see if she wants to rep me. I had to audition for her to rep me. She I gave was, you some lines? Some or? sides. Yeah, oh, sides okay. is like a script. So oh, oh, she just like, gave you a script. Okay. Yeah, like and so and I was like, all right, cool. And she's like, all right, go take five, ten minutes, go do that and come back. I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, I thought we was here for my movies. Right. <laughs> and so we did that. I was like, cool. And so... Uh, and then I think two days later, she's like, oh, I got this little, like, like you know, this part at what you call it, would you want to audition for? And I ran it, and it was like, you know, thug. And at this time, at this point, I'm like, it was like, thug, dude, da 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 And I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, all right. I was like, cool. So I go up north, I remember going. I was like, I ain't about to get this. Because it was like every hood dude and what you call it. Oh, you still had to try out for to get it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I doubt, so basically, I was trying out for her company. Okay. Because she's an agent. Mm-hmm. She sent me on a casting while I was still on break. Okay. And I said, okay, cool. I was still here before I went back to L.A. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right. I was like, but you know what? I'm going to go in there and have fun because I'm hearing everybody else do the line like, nom, nom, dun, 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 dun. and I was like, I'm not about to do that. And so I remember like maybe three days later, I get a call. She was like, okay, um, I got a call back from the um, you know, people. Do you want to hear their feedback? So normally if they say you want to hear their feedback, that means you didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And she says, there was no feedback. You got it. I was like, oh. So I come in. And what I appreciated was, I went from being like this thug dude to they just made me like a construction worker. Like, and I was okay. like, dope, dope. Cause I don't wanna, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just cause I got locks, I always be a thug. You know what I'm saying? I was always a thug or a musician. That's right. I can lay concrete. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, that was a good. That was so you good. say you don't want to do a thug role. Are, are there, what roles will, will you always turn down? Are there roles that you won't do? No, so the whole thing is, I don't mind being a thug, like doing. Th- I just don't want to be so ser- stereotypical, yeah. right? Because if okay. I'm being, if I'm being honest, like the 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 real thugs that I knew here, you would. Some of them look just like you, right? <laughs> you wouldn't know. Just like mm-hmm. you, like just so smooth, like mm-hmm. so smooth, like. Sound like you're saying he's smooth. Yeah, <laughs> just so smooth. I'm, but I'm just saying, like, like I have friends. Like, I'm not gonna say their names because I don't know what they, where their life is now. But um. I have people like will be so cool and you wouldn't even know, but then like you go into their crib and it's like guns everywhere, stuff on the table, mm-hmm. and they, and they like, D, what up? And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. I still remember one time somebody broke into one of my cars, uh, and and I called one of my friends. He's like, all right, I'm on my way. He pulled up. He like. Do you think you'll know who it is? I said, bro, I wasn't here. I didn't, I didn't say I got hijacked. I said, I didn't test it. He's like, because we can go out right now. And you just point him out. And I was like, no, nah, bro. No. Uh, but, I, but I felt flattered that, you know, we were close enough friends at the time. Do you think you could play a role like uh, when Jamie Foxx was in Django where you got a white person calling you hard, the hard R uh, N word? Of course, because did you see how you got to spank him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as long as you get some vindication. vindication. Oh, okay. I, I mean, here's the thing. Like, you got to remember, like, I do have some hard lines. Like, I don't do, like, um, I remember it was one audition. Somebody was like, okay, this is what's going to happen. You, you are, you are Rastafarian, and um, and and it opens up, and you just you and the girl, y'all just necking, and y'all just going at it, and then the cops are like freeze, and you like what, blah, blah, and then they shoot you and kill you. I was like, no, oh okay, no, mm. 
find somebody else for that part. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't do uh, nudity. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't do nudity? I don't do nudity. I did, I did some sex scenes and stuff before, like for indie, uh, indie, yeah. indie stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I don't. A lot of times it's not necessary. Oh, it was forced. It was forced. Yeah, it's forced. A lot of that stuff is like nothing. Like I can understand if like you trying to do some like Greek Roman like period pieces and trying to keep it to like that time period mm -hmm. where they having big orgies and something. <laughs> but I'm like, yo, we in the basement. I like I'm gonna be honest with you. I was like, we in the basement. I ain't never seen like for my in my life. I ain't never had a. 15 dudes and 18 <laughs> girls in the basement of my mama's house and we just bugging nigga running around. So that's just not just not for me. And then it's just like I think about my mom, I think about a few kids, I think mm -hmm. about like, you know, no. Nah, so love scene with Megan Good is off the table. I, right. No, it's not. But <laughs> <laughs> what you do is it what, it's, it's, it, it can be implied. Okay. You know oh, what I'm saying? Okay. We right. can start, you can shoot from here up. <laughs> Well, you don't want your naked body. We don't need it. You don't no butt, no butt shots. We don't need any of that. I mean, That's you can give me, a, you give me a butt. You give me a butt. They always show a lot of those butt wait. on power. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, he do a lot of squats. So, so, <laughs> so uh, but what I'm saying is, like, you'll be amazed. I've seen stuff where you thought you were seeing, um, you, well, you thought you were seeing the girl's body, mm -hmm. and it was CGI nipples. Right. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like. You know what I'm saying? Like even in Django, that wasn't uh that wasn't my man's penis when he was hanging upside down. <laughs> that was a prosthetic. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was a prosthetic. They had him hanging upside down. That was a prosthetic oh, okay. on him. Yeah. Well, I'll be watching, telling man, why they they showed the dude but twenty times? We don't even see the girl naked. Hey, they trying to pay us back for all them years. That they, they... <laughs> but yeah, sometimes like so if you even watch my movies, it's not a lot of. I, even if it's a romantic scene, mm -hmm. I don't do it. I'm like, I don't need to show any of y'all naked. Like, you don't, don't have them me kissed and fade away. Yeah, come on, okay. pull down, go to camera. When the drawers fall on the floor, you know what's about to happen. Okay. All do right, we really need to sense. see the other thing? <laughs> <laughs> That's it nowadays. Yeah. yeah. A lot of sex scenes. Well, yeah, let, the, let them have that. I'm going to stay in my lane. Did you you want to see Medea taking it? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's what I'm saying. I was like, why ain't no sex in here? You want to see Medea take it? Okay, then. <laughs> you, uh, you're a professor at Chicago State. Absolutely. Um, so y'all going to have to cut two versions of this. <laughs> <laughs> you're a professor at Chicago State. Uh, uh, and you, you, uh, you've traveled and you've done, and you're not done, obviously. I'm not finished. You're, not, you're nowhere near finished. Not by a long shot. So what are some, like being a professor, what are some of the things that you, the gems that you give to the youth? You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. what are some of the, some of the things that do your, do your trials and tribulations that mm -hmm. you're able to, to throw out there to them? And I'm sure there's fulfillment is in yeah. being a professor. But honestly, it's a lot, right? I find myself being more of a quasi therapist a lot of times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, well... Like, I'll have my students be like, well, you can't see it until it's done because I want to surprise you. And then they show me and it's not good. And I'll be like, stop holding the surprise, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's get it together. Let's get it done together. Because right. you can help. Because right. I can help you. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one you want to surprise. No. You want to surprise the no. audience. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just giving them jewels. Like, even the best director you think is out here, mm -hmm. movies are still sometimes made by committee. I'll get it as much as I can. That's why they have test screenings. Then they go see what the audience say. And they come back and they recut scenes and they mm -hmm. massage scenes. So by the time you think it's coming out for the first day, four, five, six thousand people might have already seen this movie and already gave their notes and stuff like that. Um, get out your own way. Mm -hmm. If you're in a room, you belong there. You know, um, it's tough to, you know, and I, I don't want to say this disrespectful. I'm noticing a lot of the younger generation to ha have gentle mentals. That's the best way I can say it. They, they mentals are very gentle. And, you know, so just trying to, like, reiterate that this, none of this is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. And if you just waking up in the morning and go to class is hard for you, you won't, you're not going to work in this business. 
Um, I understand fear is debilitating. Mm. I understand my students is really hard on themselves. I explain to them is a such thing as paralysis by over analysis. Tell that to the camera. Man. Tell that. To it is a thing called paralysis by over analysis. Damn. You think too much so you can't do. Bars. You think so much so you can't do. And I go like, man, ain't nothing wrong with a vomit. If you want to write, ain't nothing wrong with a vomit draft. It don't even got to be good. Sometimes I, I make a, I do little exercises where I'm like, yo, give me your ideas for the movies. And I want the worst ideas you can think of. Because if that's the thing, it's not hard for them. They be like, a mule, a mule did, did fight a, a ogre. That's Shrek. Oh! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and then when you get that, I'm like, all right, now try for some good ideas. And now they freeze up. No, no, no. I want the same thing, right? Because clay is what? You can mold it, it ain't, yes. but it started as dirt. It's this, it's dirt and water and whatever yeah. else it is. And then you got to mold it in something, right? And what you can mold out of it versus what I can mold out of it versus it's just by the practice that we done put into it. Nobody's good. I'm like, nobody is good. So for y'all out here, do everything because we all going to suck in the beginning anyway. And some of us still suck after 10 years. But <laughs> if you find enjoyment in it, right? It's like the, it's like being forty five in the intramural league. You having fun. You ain't going to the league. Yeah, yeah. You ain't going to the league, but you have fun, right? Yeah. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not about to become a special op spy, but I like going to the gun range. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody's about to hire me. To like we're gonna take out that terrorist, Derek. You got damn right. You got damn right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's it. I mean, and I and I have a plethora. It just depends on where I'm at. My students will tell you I'll be. You know, I, I, I try to give them, I try to meet them where they at too, because I'm a young-ish appearing professor. I, you know, the way I dress, the way I talk, what I do, I try not to change myself. Thank God I got a boss that um, accepts me for me. Um, and I just, you know, just let them know the real. I t share my failures with them. Even though they be like, oh, I'm having a such day. I'm like, you? Listen, these kid boys and got me so many times. Like, I'm like, Look, we both. And guess what professor still did? Called a called a train, got on the Uber, rented a car. I still came. I still cause I still got to show up for you. Mm -hmm. And you still have fresh sneakers. And I still keep the I still keep fresh sneakers. <laughs> what made you think you weren't as good? Was it did other people have more feature films than you, or what was? No, it, what was it let you know you were it was below the, them? So it was the quality of work. Oh, okay. It was the quality of work. I'm not. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna bullshit you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm the best of this. You know what I'm saying? Because even right now, I'm clearly, because I'm not the best, right? I want to, that's still something I um I aspire to be, right? You know, because here's the thing. You got LeBron James, right? Who's arguably, you could put him in the, in the GOAT debate, right? Okay. And you got other people like, no, he's not the best, right? You can look at the bodies of work, mm -hmm. right? So my thing is, I'm not trying to be the best. I'm trying to be the best me. And mm. and in me trying to be the best me, that's Bars. gonna um, no, but it's <laughs> like, for you real. like that, huh? yeah, because <laughs> it's gonna Jamaica's fit. good, Jamaica's <laughs> very <laughs> no, because I've been in the space of trying to be the best, and then that became competitive, and then the uh, then the work suffered. Mm. Whereas trying to be the best you, like I tell my students, is the voice. Sooner or later, like even with y'all with this podcast, right? Sooner or later, you'll have the best cameramen and the best mics and the best thing. The only thing that's gonna matter is y'all voice and what y'all bring into the space, right? Sooner or later, I can get the best cameraman with the best lights and the best studios, and I'll make a film, and people are like it just didn't resonate because my I didn't develop my voice. Mm -hmm. So that's what like for me, I just want to be the best me because that then I'll find my audience. It's, I mean, like Tyler Perry, you I don't care what you say about like his technical aspect of his work or anything like that. He got an his, audience. He, he got an audience because his voice is so distinct. Yes. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino, you you don't even got to know it's a Quentin Tarantino movie and you be like, oh, this this like some Quentin Tarantino stuff. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Spike Lee, all these people, notice they carved out their voice. People keep thinking it's all about the regular type. No, they, their voice is undeniable. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's funny you mentioned all of them. Quinn Tarantino, uh, Tyler Perry. Who's yeah. someone that you really you really admire their work and you kind of gravitate to their work and like, yo, I could, I could, I really rock with them. Yo, it's, um, it's this one director. I, th I feel like he don't get enough love. Antoine Fuqua. Mm. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Yes. 
He did all. He did the Equalizer. You know you a bad boy when you get Denzel to, do, to not only do a sequel, you had him do a trilogy. Yeah. yeah. You tell me a a, a, a sequel <laughs> you ever seen Denzel do, right? Um, and I think and I think he slept on right. You know, because he he has a lot of good films out there. Um, I even love that Magnificent. Set, was a Magnificent Seven movie he did, the Cowboy movie with Denzel and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You like that movie? I like that movie. You didn't like it? You I didn't, didn't like see it. it. You didn't like that movie? Why are you? Was like it? Training Day too? Training Day. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you see what I'm saying? So it's like, oh. yeah. Yeah. So I think he's. I feel like you never really hear about him for real. I think like, he did. Brooklyn's Finest. He too. did. Yeah, yeah. Brooklyn's Finest was good too. But yeah. you, but you never hear about it. like the yeah. most you heard about him was when he had the scandal with Nicole Murphy. <laughs> and I was like, and I remember that, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not condoning what the brother did, but I was like, man, this man been out here making some hits, <laughs> making some hits, and nobody mm-hmm. talking about him. But for me, that that also like took some pressure off me too. I said, listen. Ain't nobody got to talk about you, and you can still successfully live your dream. Right. Because you can't take away that he successfully made this stuff. Mm-hmm. He successfully still got a check. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I thought, like, he's on top of my uh, list. This is going to be controversial. I don't condone what this man did. Uh, but Woody Easy. Allen. Oh. Woody Allen was a, uh, was a fan. Like, look at this. Uh, and I mess with him too because like Woody didn't Woody doesn't like move the camera for unnecessary reasons, mm-hmm. right? Like like you know how some people got to hide their stuff with just a whole bunch of cuts. He would just right. like mm-hmm. he would he would let it go. Hannah and her sisters, all the like I really liked his work. Oh, and just the ability to have two actors and not a lot going on and they just having a conversation and it's interesting. Mm-hmm. I used to lo- I, like I love that. Again, don't condone anything <laughs> else. We just strictly talking about the artistry. Cur- curb, your, curb your enthusiasm, so that too. L- L- Larry, Larry David. Larry David. Yeah. Um, mm. I just like, you know what I'm saying? I just, I really rocked with stuff like that. And then, of course, you know, I appreciate, you know, some of the you know, newer directors. That was Steven Spielberg, of course, and, you know, Forrest Gump, one of my, uh, oh, wait, Robert Zemeckis and yeah. stuff like mm. Forrest Gump, one of my favorite movies. You know, it's a lot of good people out there, but those were the two, for the most part, that I'm like, yo, a lot of their work resonated with me, mm-hmm. you know. I ain't got a mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what, what would you say you like more, being in front of the camera or behind? Everybody asks me this question. Uh, I like them both equally. I'll tell you why. They give me a break from each other. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a cop out. Yeah. Did you answer the question? No, I, I didn't even finish. No, 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 because he said 50-50 is behind the camera in I front. Didn't, I didn't finish, did he? No. You about to explain it. Though. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Actually, I don't even think I want to talk to you no more. <laughs> Just me and yo. <laughs> um, the reason I say 50-50, especially because think about it, I'm, I'm more of an indie filmmaker, more of like, you know, I do a lot of smaller budget digital stuff. So when I'm in a project, whether I'm a writer of it or somebody bringing me in, you're talking about that's a baby I'm taking from conception to completion. So I'm reading scripts, I'm giving notes, I'm doing this, right? I'm casting, I'm helping produce, I'm getting stuff together, I'm on set, I'm directing, I'm all of that stuff. Then after all of that's done, I'm in the edit lab, then I'm with the colorist, I'm with the composer, I'm with the, and then after that, now we gotta send it to film festivals. I'm going to as many film festivals as I can, right? That's all the stuff I gotta do, right? I love it, but it's tiring. When I'm, a, when I'm acting, you give me my script, I do my lines, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do my lines, you record me, and I'll see you guys at the premiere. <laughs> you okay. know? Yeah, that makes you sense. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So so it gives me a break from things, but also keeps me acting, because I love to be on set. I'm not one of those people that when we have a 12-hour day, I'm like, oh, man. I've been right, like, that's what we hear about a lot, the I, long days on set. I don't even notice it. I'll be like, it's not enough time. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, it's not enough time. And, and Set for me is different from a lot of the people I know because I actually lose weight on set when a lot of other people gain weight because you got craft services and especially when you you know people are eating and all that drink and be merry. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the script that you read where it's kind of challenging? To what act? 
Like you was like, man, like like you saw the script and you were like, yo, like this is, man, this is this is hard, but yo, like uh, I gotta get in the mold for it. There's, you know what? It, it was one, and it's it's unfortunate because it, it never got recorded, it never got seen. Mm -hmm. So I was on a show called Roadies on um eight, on Showtime. And I had to audition. It was like 15 pages of like just almost like a monologue. And I'm just going in. And I remember uh, meeting with uh, Cameron Crowe and, um, and and his producers there. And we reading and we going in there. Because I'm, I'm, I'm playing this. One, it was scary because it's like we want a big black bald man who played drums. And at the time, I was like short, long locks. Skinny, <laughs> you know, and I was like, "Yo, how how am I supposed to play this, right? Because you trick yourself out mentally." I'm like, "Well, you want this big black? Am I supposed to be in there?" Like, "Yeah," and um, but I was like, "No, I'm gonna play it like myself, and I'm gonna play it with my humor. I'm gonna be like kind of funny with it." Mm -hmm. And I remember us going back and forth, and it was intimidating because I hadn't been in a room with somebody um, who was at that level, right? You know, he he directed Almost Famous. And stuff like that, and I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm in here, and like, this is like my first, like, mm -hmm. not a not a bit thing. This is like, yo, you have a chance to become like a series regular mm -hmm. or, or a guest star, and we did it, and I killed it. And by the time we start shooting, so much stuff had changed in the show, and because I was in the band, I wasn't a roadie because the show was about the roadies. They only got to. Three of the band members, they didn't get to the last two. It was me and this other guy, right? And um, and I remember he came, and I still have it somewhere in my house. He gave me 16 pages of backstory. He said, "Look, next season, this is this is you coming." And it was like, and I knew it was because like I'm sleeping with the lead singer sister, and I was like, I said, "Oh, I'm about to be lit in season two. And the show wound up getting canceled. That could have changed the whole trajectory <laughs> of my career. No, it's not over. Well, every, it's not never over. You know, no. everything in due time and God's time. But I was just like, yo, man. bars. I think about how many times I, I think about how many times I got there, and he's just like, this ain't it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, what's the next thing? You know. Um, I forgot the question that quick. Um, oh, you said you were on the shy, right? Mm -hmm. So what's what's a day like a typical day like on set at the shy? Do you, cause I'm not familiar. What uh, did you have a big role? Or? No, I had a uh, I had a nice little speaking role. I, look, I'm never gonna bring up if I was an extra. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm. I'm not gonna. You know, no offense to nobody, <laughs> but my, nobody. No offense to nobody. Like, so like, how, so do you have to try out? Do, yeah, so I have, to, you I have know? to come in. So I was still living in LA at the time. Okay. So it's so funny. I shout out uh, to Michelle Hayes, uh, Hayes talent. Mm -hmm. I was in LA. I happened to come home to visit. Mm -hmm. And I, I, at that time, Michelle was trying to start a uh, like a streaming service, okay. and people was like, "Oh, you should talk to such and such. She got all these short films." I was like, "Yeah, cool, cool. I came to meet her, and then we were sitting talking. And I don't know how it came up. I don't know if she said I had an interesting look or whatever, whatever. And I was just like, and she was like, "You act?" I said, "Yeah, I act." She's like, "You act?" I said, "Yeah, I act." <laughs> She's like, "All right." She's like, "Audition for me, you did." I did an audition for. I think I did okay. I don't think I did like amazing because she gave it to me on the spot, um, but. Shout Wait, out. so what, what is the audition for? What does that mean? Just to, to, to see if she wants to rep me. I had to audition for her to rep me. She I gave you some lines? Some or? sides. Yeah, oh, sides okay. is like a script. So oh, she just like, gave you a script. Okay. Yeah, like and so and I was like, all right, cool. And she's like, all right, go take five, ten minutes, go do that and come back. I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, I thought we was here for my movies. Right. <laughs> and so we did that. I was like, cool. And so... Uh, and then I think two days later, she's like, oh, I got this little, like, like you know, this part at what you call it, would you want it audition for? And I read it, and it was like, you know, thug. And at this time, at this point, I'm like, it was like, thug, dude, da 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 And I was like, all right. <laughs> Begrudging. I was like, all right. I was like, cool. So I go up north, I remember going. I was like, I ain't about to get this. Because it was like every hood dude and what you call it. Oh, you still had to try out for to get it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I doubt, so basically, I was trying out for her company. Okay. Because she's an agent. Mm -hmm. She sent me on a casting while I was still on break. Okay. And I said, okay, cool. I was still here before I went back to L.A. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, all right. I was like, but you know what? I'm going to go in there and have fun because I'm hearing everybody else do the line like, num, num, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not about to do that. And so I remember like maybe three days later, I get a call. She was like, okay, um, I got a call back from the um, you know, people. Do you want to hear their feedback? So normally if they say you want to hear their feedback, that means you didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And she says, there was no feedback. You got it. I was like, oh. So I come in. And what I appreciated was I went from being like this thug dude to they just made me like a construction worker. Like, and I was okay. like, dope, dope. Cause I don't wanna, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just cause I got locks, I always be a thug. You know what I'm saying? I was always a thug or a musician. That's right. I can lay concrete. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, that was a good. That so was you good. say you don't wanna do a thug role. Are, are there, what roles will, will you always turn down? Are there roles that you won't do? No, so the whole thing is I don't mind being a thug, like doing. Th- I just don't want to be so ser- stereotypical, yeah. right? Because if okay. I'm being, if I'm being honest, like the 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 real thugs that I knew here, you would some of them look just like you, right? <laughs> you wouldn't know, just like mm-hmm. you, like just so smooth, like mm-hmm. so smooth, like. Saying he's smooth. Yeah, <laughs> just so smooth. I'm, mean, but I'm just saying, like, like I have friends. Like, I'm not gonna say their names because I don't know what they, where their life is now, but um. I have people like will be so cool and you wouldn't even know, but then like you go into their crib and it's like guns everywhere, stuff on the table, mm-hmm. and, they, and they like, D, what up? And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 like mm-hmm. I still remember one time somebody broke into one of my cars, uh, and and I called one of my friends. He's like, all right, I'm on my way. He pulled up. He like. Do you think you'll know who it is? I said, bro, I wasn't here. I didn't, I didn't say I got hijacked. I said, I didn't test it. He's like, because we can go out right now. And you just point him out. And I was like, no, nah, bro. No. Uh, but, I, but I felt flattered that, you know, we were close enough friends <laughs> at the time. Do you think you could play a role like uh, when Jamie Foxx was in Django where you got a white person calling you hard, the hard R E word, uh, N word? Of course, because did you see how you got to spank him? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as long as you get some vindication. vindication. Oh, okay. I, I mean, here's the thing. Like, you got to remember, like, I do have some hard lines. Like, I don't do, like, um, I remember it was one audition. Somebody was like, okay, this is what's going to happen. You, you are, you're a Rastafarian, and, um, and, and it opens up, and you just, you and the girl, y'all just necking, and y'all just going at it, and then the cops are like, freeze, and you're like, what, blah, blah, and then they shoot you and kill you. I was like, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Mm. Find somebody else for that part. I don't want to do that. Oh, okay. Um, I don't do, uh, nudity, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't do nudity? I don't do nudity. I okay. did I did some sex scenes and stuff before, like for indie uh indie, mm-hmm. indie stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I don't a lot of times it's not necessary. Oh, it was forced, it was forced. Yeah, it's oh, forced. Yeah. A lot of that stuff is like not ne- like I can understand if like you trying to do some like Greek Roman like period pieces and trying to keep it to like that time period mm-hmm. where they having big orgies <laughs> and something. But I'm like, yo. We in the basement. I like. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm like, we in the basement. I ain't never seen like for my in my life. I ain't never had a 15 dudes and 18 girls in the basement of my mama's house, and we just bugging <laughs> nigga running around. So that's just not just not for me. And then it's just like I think about my mom. I think about a few kids. I think about like you know. No, so I, I love seeing what Megan Good is off the table. I, right. No, it's not. But <laughs> <laughs> what you do is it what, it's, it's, it, it can be implied. Okay. You know oh, what I'm saying? Okay. We right. can start. You can shoot from here up. Well, you don't want your naked body. <laughs> we don't need it. You don't, no butt. No butt shots. We don't uh, need any of that. I mean, That's you can give me a you give me a butt. Power. You can give me a butt. They always show a lot those of, wait, butt wait. on power uh, well, I mean, I mean, he do a lot of squats. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, but what I'm saying is like you'll be amazed. I've seen stuff where you thought you were seeing um, you, well, you thought you were seeing the girl's body. Mm-hmm. And it was CGI nipples. Right, yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like, you know what I'm saying? Like even in Django, that wasn't uh that wasn't my man's penis when he was hanging upside down. <laughs> that was a prosthetic. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. That was a prosthetic. They had him hanging upside down. That was a prosthetic oh, okay. on him. Yeah. Well, I'll be watching tell him, man, why they they showed the dude but 20 times. We don't even see the girl naked. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're trying to pay us back for all them years that they was there. But yeah, sometimes, like, so if you even watch my movies, it's not a lot of, I, 
even if it's a romantic scene, mm-hmm. I don't do it. I'm like, I don't need to show any of y'all naked. Like, you, you don't have them kissed and fade away. Yeah, come on, okay. pull down, go to camera. When the drawers fall on the floor, you know what's about to happen. Okay. All do right, we man, really need to see the other thing? <laughs> <laughs> That's it nowadays. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let the, let them have that. I'm gonna stay in my lane. Did you you want to see Medea taking it? <laughs> hey man. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 That's that's what I'm saying. I'm like, why ain't no sex in here? You want to see Medea take it? Okay then. <laughs> you uh, you're a professor at Chicago State. Absolutely. Um, so y'all gonna have to cut two versions of this. <laughs> <laughs> you're a professor at Chicago State. Uh, uh, and you you uh, you've traveled and you done and you're not done obviously I'm not finished you're not you're nowhere near finished not yet. by a long shot so what are some like being a professor what are some of the things that you the gems that you give to the youth you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. what are some of the some of the things that do your do your trials and tribulations that mm-hmm. you're able to to throw out there to them and I'm sure there's fulfillment is in yeah. being a professor but honestly. It's a lot, right? I find myself being more of a quasi-therapist a lot of times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, well, like I'll have my students be like, well, you can't see it until it's done because I want to surprise you. And then they show me and it's not good. And I'll be like, stop holding the surprise, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Let's let's get it together. Let's get it done together. Because you can help. Because right. I can help you. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one you want to surprise. No. You want to surprise the no. audience. Mm-hmm. And, and and just giving them jewels. Like, even the best director you think is out here, mm-hmm. movies are still sometimes made by committee. I'll get it as much as I can. That's why they have test screenings. Mm-hmm. Then they go see what the audience say. Right. And they come back and they recut scenes and they mm-hmm. massage scenes. So by the time you think it's coming out for the first day, Four, five, six thousand people might have already seen this movie and already gave their notes and stuff like that. Um, get out your own way. Mm-hmm. If you're in a room, you belong there. You know, um, it's tough to, you know, and I, I don't want to say this disrespectfully. I'm noticing a lot of the younger generation to ha- have gentle mentals. That's the best way I can say it. They, they mentals are very gentle. And, you know, so. Just trying to like reiterate that this, none of this is gonna be easy. Mm-hmm. And if you just waking up in the morning and go to class is hard for you, you won't. You're not gonna work in this business. Um, I understand fear is debilitating. Mm. I understand my students is really hard on themselves. I explain to them it's a such thing as paralysis by over analysis. Tell that to the camera. Tell that. To- it is a thing called paralysis by over analysis. Damn. You think too much so you can't do. Bars. You think so much so you can't do. And I go like, man, ain't nothing wrong with a vomit. If you want to write, ain't nothing wrong with a vomit draft. It don't even got to be good. Sometimes I, I make a, I do little exercises where I'm like, yo, give me your ideas for the movies. And I want the worst ideas you can think of. Because if that's the thing, it's not hard for them. They be like, oh, mule, oh, mule did, did fight a uh, uh, ogre. That's Shrek. Oh! <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um, and then when you get that, I was like, all right, now try for some good ideas. And now they freeze up. No, no, no. I want the same thing, right? Because clay is what? You can mold it. You can mold it. it ain't, yes. But it started as dirt. It's this. It's dirt and water and whatever else it is. And then you got to mold it in something, right? And what you can mold out of it versus what I can mold out of it versus... It's just by the practice that we done put into it. Nobody's good. I'm like, nobody is good. So for y'all out here, do everything, because we all going to suck in the beginning anyway. And some of us still suck after 10 years. But if you find enjoyment in it, right, it's like the, it's like being 45 in an intramural league. You having fun. You ain't going to the league. Yeah, yeah. You ain't going to the league, but you have fun, right? Yeah. Right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not about to become a special op spy, but I like going to the gun range. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody's about to hire me like, we're going to take out that terrorist, Derek. You got damn right. You got damn right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's it. I mean, and I, and I have a plethora. It just depends on where I'm at. My students will tell you, I be, you know, I, I, I try to give them, I try to meet them where they at too because I'm a youngish appearing 
professor. I, yeah. You know, the way I dress, the way I talk, what I do, I try not to change myself. Thank God I got a boss that um, accepts me for me. Um, and I just, you know, just let them know the real. I share my failures with them. Even though they be like, oh, I'm having a such day. I'm like, you? Listen, these kid boys and got me so many times. Look, I'm like, we both. And guess what Professor still did? Called a, called a train, got on the Uber, rented a car. I still came. I still Because I still got to show up for you. And you still have fresh sneakers. And I still keep the, I still keep fresh sneakers. <laughs>